This expedition hasn't turned out at all how I thought it would, and perhaps that's why I've enjoyed it so much. I've just sent an email to Leon, he's a friend of a friend. Would you be interested in a long walk? Six to eight weeks, desert, pulling a cart, home for Christmas. <laughs> Who can possibly say no to that? I'm Leon McCarran. Excellent. And um, what would you say your definition of adventure is? Um, I think it's adventure is a really overused term, and you can kind of. I went to past a coffee shop the other day, which said yeah. adventuring drinks was having a different type of coffee. Oh, yeah. um, but I think it, the essence of adventure is really simple. It's just a it's a choice, a, sort of a mindset to do something different or exciting or new. Okay. Um, and so that adventure can be big or small. I think it's a very personal thing. And Which, did you always have adventures? Yeah, yeah, in some form or another I always liked it. Uh, I always liked getting out into the wilds of the world and running or cycling or camping or whatever it was. Fantastic. Was it in your family? Um, I think so. I grew up in the north coast of Northern Ireland, which is a mini adventure playground. Yeah. It's quite like uh, Galway and yeah. County Galway, you know, there's real rugged wilderness around. Um, so I, I grew up in the countryside and I think that oh, feeds right. into a life of adventure. Fantastic. I can imagine it was absolutely amazing. So. What would you say was the most defining moment of your journey across the empty water? The most defining moment was probably um, we, we took this large steel cart and dragged it across the desert because it, the best way to cross deserts is to bring camels. Uh, that's right. what people have been doing for thousands of years, but we didn't really know how to work a camel, so <laughs> we, we couldn't <laughs> afford them either. Um, so we built this steel cart and loaded it with supplies and yeah. dragged it. But it was terrible because we didn't know to build a cart for crossing the desert so when we got out there it didn't work um, and we had to find this guy an expat Italian in the city we started and he helped us rebuild it and design a steering column wow. and so once we got out into the desert with this new cart and it worked it was just fantastic because we suddenly felt like this expedition was going to happen uh, because before that it was it seemed like it had all just fallen apart and we were going to be going How long home. were you in training for it? Um, we weren't really. Uh, we, oh, we, the, the guy I went with, um, I mean, both of us are self-employed as mm. adventurers, whatever mm. that means. We make a living from doing these trips. Mm. Um, and so we go off and do something exciting, come back, give talks, write mm. books and so on until we make enough money to go and do another trip. Do. It's just this circle. And he was due to go off on a big budget expedition somewhere, which mm. fell through at the last minute. And so six weeks before leaving, he said, I've got all this free time. Do you want to go and do a trip? And how about the empty quarter? So we prepared for six weeks and then took about six or seven weeks to do the trip. But most of that six weeks was just organising logistics rather than actually yeah. training in any sense. Okay, okay. And did Alistair ever get on your nerves? Um, it, was it hard going across, you know, this big, empty, desert quarter and having just one person there? I'd say yeah, there some it was, it was less hard than just having just me. Um, yeah. I'm sure I'm, I'm, I would have annoyed myself more than... <laughs> Uh, he did, but uh, we we actually got on really well. I've done a few long walking trips with people, and um, the longest was six months with one person, and that was really hard work. Wow. But six weeks is just enough time to mm. get slightly annoyed and not want to see that person for a, a little <laughs> while when you get back, <laughs> but also to, you know, to kind of not fall out too much. Okay. But yeah, he had a few annoying little habits, which wind me up. Give me something, like, yeah. yeah, give me something to think about during the day. Vice versa. <laughs> Absolutely. So I suppose what we all want to know is what did you eat? Um, not very exciting things we, because we had to carry all of our mm. food with us. So it was food that was lightweight yeah. but full of energy. So things like instant noodles, mm -hmm. pins of meat, <laughs> look and taste and smell like dog food, horrible <laughs> stuff. Um, and uh, biscuits and that's about it. Wow. Breakfast was big rolls and uh, powdered milk, Very all mixed in together. Wow. Okay. Yeah, we were dying for an ice cream by the end. I'd <laughs> say so. Oh my god. And I suppose, did you meet any interesting people? We did. We actually met a lot of people in the desert and we hadn't expected wow. to. We thought it was, we read Thesiger's book about mm. this desert travel and, and when he was there in the 1940s, which mm. is this wilderness. But since oil has been discovered, there's lots of roads crisscrossing and all these people. Yeah. And so actually it became quite a social experience and we right. met not a lot of people, but yeah. every few days or every week we'd meet someone yeah. going somewhere. And there was this one guy, at some point we crossed this road and we're following it. And there was this one Saudi Arabian lorry driver mm. driving this huge, big articulated truck. Okay. And he saw us with our car by the side <laughs> of the road and yeah. sort of pulled a 
this crazy kind of spinning U-turn in the middle of the road with this big truck and got out to give us some cake. Yeah. Um, and then drove off and two days later, uh, he must have been coming back the same way and he brought all these presents for us and uh, oh, gave us a little lovely. picnic. That's so really he was nice. one of our favourites. Yeah, I can imagine. That's absolutely fantastic. So did you have a lot of kind of, with the strange to me people and bond with them for an instant and know that you'd never see them again? I mean, in a world where you've got Facebook and you can connect with all these different people. Yeah, I mean, I, I always find that strange, actually. Yeah. And I, I do quite a lot of these sorts of trips, and yeah. so it's become quite normal to me, but I, I still find it very odd. Um, but it's, it's also really nice. It's just a really nice way to restore faith in humanity, because I, well, I live in London yeah. now, and if you walk down the street in London, you can quite quickly you know, get totally disillusioned with the human race. Everyone seems so grumpy. <laughs> but in these trips, when you meet someone just yeah. for a few minutes, you have this great experience, and they all almost always are kind and help you out with something and then you know that you'll never see them again but yeah. it's quite a nice moment while it lasted. So do you think adventure has given you that sort of faith in humanity? Yeah, yeah, I think among other things that's, a, that's it's one true. of the reasons. It's, I, I'm attracted to go places often because of the landscape. Yeah. I imagine the great places I'll see but it's, mm. it's always people that I remember and, yeah. uh, and have the best moments with. So yeah, I think that's a great Fantastic. benefit from it. Thank you. Thanks for you, you know, I think, I think that's everything. Is that okay guys?